$3,500. That's how much you're going to need to pay for what Apple is calling the most advanced personal electronics device ever. But can this thing actually improve your life? Welcome to a day in the life with the Apple Vision Pro. Good morning and welcome to a day in the life with the Apple Vision Pro. I haven't had too much hands-on time with this device just yet since I got it last night, but the goal for today is to sit down, enjoy some leisurely content here in the morning and walk you guys through what it might actually look like living with this type of device. I like to start out my days with a couple of YouTube videos to get my brain warmed up and ready to work. And with the Vision Pro, I can basically convert any living space into a cinema-like experience. There's currently no YouTube app at launch, but due to the popularity of the Vision Pro, they've already confirmed they are building one. But for now, Safari works just fine. One thing I'm incredibly impressed with is the Vision Pro's window tracking. Things just stay where you put them. Another extremely cool detail that I didn't expect is that you can bring a window super close and interact with the UI as if it was a touchscreen, the same way you would with a phone or an iPad. There are also some fun AR games at the launch, but gaming isn't nearly as good as something like the MetaQuest 3 currently. I'm still getting used to where this thing makes sense in my day-to-day -day life, but the fact that I'm wanting to grab it first thing in the morning tells me it's something that will be a big staple for me going forward. Now, the next thing on my to-do list today is to head downtown to the Creator Studio since I invited a few of my friends to try this thing out and get their first reaction. Since the Vision Pro hasn't launched in Canada yet, I'm probably one of the few people in Vancouver with one period, so this will be a great chance for everyone to go hands-on with the device before it's even available here. Let's see if they think the Apple Vision Pro is worth the almost $4,000 price tag. Yeah. Oh, whoa. <laughs> this is crazy. Damn, that's crazy. It feels less trippy than I thought it would. It feels like I'm on a mushroom trip. I basically ran through the same demo with everybody, and while people had different reactions to different parts of it, everyone did seem to have this kind of eye-opening experience that the tech is amazing. I actually like it. I think it feels very, like, chill. It's like I'm living in the world of tomorrow. <laughs> Today. Do you know when you watch it's... movies, and they had the digital screen and everything just like, it's all like a holograph? I feel that's this. If if the footage of the outside real world was more HD, I feel like it would be like a little bit like I'd be scared. I've never done any type of like VR or anything, and that's yeah, that's very impressive. That like immersion. I want one. I'm like ready to get a sugar daddy to buy me one. It was a ton of fun getting to see everyone react so strongly to this thing, but now it's time to do the part I've been dreading: walking around in public with it on. We've all seen the viral videos of people using the Vision Pro on the subway or in a big city. So I wanted to see how wild it felt to do it myself, and I was terrified. Outside of people staring and taking pictures of me on the train, this is actually where I ran into my first big issue of the day. Somehow, the Vision Pro bugged out and my screen recording did not save. This is a huge bummer, but I think it's a good reminder that this is an early version of the device and bugs are going to be expected with such a radical new product. On the train, I basically just pulled up Apple Maps to see which stop to get off at, and I confirmed that the travel mode is rock solid when in motion. Pretty interesting having to walk and carry the window with you. Like if I let go of my fingers here, it'll just stay and I'll walk away and it'll be lost. I can actually see a world though where you have maps that paint a picture of where you're supposed to walk, like maybe a line with arrows on the ground ahead of you, which honestly would be so sick. Yeah, I don't know, it's pretty cool. Like it works, it's not the best in the world, but it does work, it's semi-functional at least. It's interesting because we're at a time where this type of technology is new and weird. People have never seen it before, so they're like amazed by it, confused by it, they think it's funny. But the same thing happened when the iPhone came out. Obviously, it's a lot different strapping a computer to your face than just carrying around something in your pocket. Within the next five to 10 years, if the technology gets smaller, it gets more popular amongst people. And uh, see, we got fans everywhere. <laughs> Uh, it gets smaller, it gets more popular amongst people, and I'm very curious to see like what the adoption rate of something like this looks like. One of my main things that I will say about this is that this is the first time tech has felt this fun for me in a very long time. I feel just like a little kid seeing like, oh, what can it do? What can it not do? 
And those are exciting times because you can only go up from there. One of the ways the Vision Pro has already changed the way I go about my day-to-day -day life is I find myself shooting panorama photos a lot now. I was shocked at just how good these look on the device, and when viewing these photos wrapped around your body in the headset, it feels like you're standing exactly where you took the photo. A perfect example of the Apple ecosystem just working. And I know that it's not meant to be used outside, but what I can see in my headset right now is just this floating UI. It looks super crisp. I can see the sea bus going by in the background. I have beautiful Vancouver in my eyes. Birds are flying around. It's just, it feels magic. I hate to use that. I know it's like kind of a buzzword, but it literally does feel like a magical experience. And it's insane how much promise this type of tech has. Using the Vision Pro by the water in such a beautiful spot was such a fun time. I'm probably the first person to ever watch a Casey Neistat video floating over the ocean. And I was definitely more comfortable using it outside at this point. Wow. It's nuts like seeing the science world. And then I just have Casey Neistat. I was impressed that you could even interact with a massive wall of content as if it was a touchscreen device, but this was lagging a bit when I tried it. I know this iteration of the product is not designed to be used in this way, but it's very easy to imagine a world where we enjoy the benefits of AR in such a seamless way. Of course, walking the seawall with it caught a lot of people's attention, and some of them were pretty stoked to see it in person. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> They're not easy to find up here. <laughs> At this point in the day, I was pretty tired and wanted to get a bit of work done, so I headed home to close out the evening. I wanted to fully commit and see what a Vision Pro workflow was like, so I actually removed the monitor from my desk entirely to test out an AR workspace. Being able to connect to a MacBook, or in this case, my Mac Studio, is instantly a game changer for me and will make the Vision Pro a main staple in any travel kit I have going forward. The content is incredibly sharp to look at, and I was was actually able to get some real work done in the headset without any real compromises. I'm still not entirely sure if I see the Vision Pro as more of an entertainment or productivity item, but it does certain things really well in both areas, which I am glad to see. Altogether, I think that the public perception of the Apple Vision Pro is stronger than even Apple anticipated, and because of that, we should see massive support in the form of innovative apps and software start flooding the store soon. My actual thoughts on this device after a full day running around, using it out and about, is it is incredible, and it's not quite where I want it to be for a device with this much promise. The most obvious and biggest issues I ran into while making this video were things like the battery life, because I found that I was having to constantly tether in and charge pretty much throughout the entire day so that we could get through everything that we wanted to shoot. But one thing that I'm a bit surprised about is after taking the headset off, I keep finding myself wanting to control my Mac or my phone with just my eyes. So the muscle memory of this pinch and look type of gesture system is already getting baked right into my brain. I have so many thoughts that I want to go into on this device that don't necessarily make sense for this video, so definitely expect a full review coming from me in just a few weeks time. Thank you so much for watching, and let me know in the comments any questions that you might have about the Apple Vision Pro. And as always, I'll see you on the next one. Take care.